Salutations! The last game I reviewed was a big stinker. Thankfully, this game did manage to be good enough to crack the top 10 for episode 12. It's Frown Dragon's Odyssey. Seizure warning for this game, there are some flashing white lights before boss fights take place and some scenes. Big game, 2.5 gigs big. Those are there like under a gig. Looks gorgeous though. Angels and demons having it out on how the humans should be. Angels want to bestow, demons want to push them with trial so they get stronger on their own. You're an angel kicking it with fucking Zeus, of all people, who tells you one of your own is taken off and is affecting the human world below, so it's up to our main guy to bring the angel back home. A super big departure from most of these Kimco and even EXE Create games, which are responsible for most of this list. It's a boy-girl duo taking on enemies in the first time ever, for at least for this series of games, an action RPG. Yeah, you go melee and girl goes distance with her magic. There's a fire and ice element for most enemies, and it actually does matter for once. Instead of brute forcing your way through. There's cooking and crafting and also some friendship parameters, but these are side stuff, and the game does warn you if you get too far that, hey, this character is going to be unavailable after this. I was playing through the main story, hoping for a new game plus to let me go back and befriend with all this money I got from the final dungeon. No. So I had to restart and focus on that aspect and the unlockable titles you can get. Like, liked gift sent, disliked gift sent, money, enemy kill count, etc. Special thanks to Pixelon Plays for some of the trickier aspects of some dungeons. But that was like one or two things. No corner map, but things are mostly easy enough to figure out. Only time I ever got kind of lost was kind of in the final dungeon. But by then, most stuff leads somewhere anyhow. The crafting cooking friendship aspect can take almost a full session in of itself. So if you're not a platinum hunter like myself, this one can just be a full day's worth of quick action RPG. Not too hard at all if you go out of your way to kill enemies and grind. You'll be at a good enough level to take down bosses, easily dealt with using your big stored magic attack with the square button, I believe. I noticed that this is the first game that I've played all the way through to have trophies that aren't common. They're not hard trophies, just very time consuming. If you're interested, I will leave a link below that I will go into detail on what you need to do to get them. Because there is a pretty... For once, there's a pretty uh, big step-by-step -step way on how best to tackle this. And I'll leave that in the description below. A lot of fun to be had in this amazing, albeit quick, action RPG. With the look of a light SNES early PS1 title. Very simple, albeit like one or two places, like I mentioned, you'll be killing and constantly getting levels. You don't even have to like dodge roll or anything. The other side stuff outside of battle arguably can bog the game down for some. But completionists will seek this one out. Fans of action RPGs will want to give this a go. This is definitely B+. More pesky RNG stuff with some things in the aspects outside of battle, but still a fun enough game to rank third on my updated top 10, Bye Bye As Divine Hearts 1. You want to get the Platinum, like I said, I'll leave a link for some of the less common trophies. Either way, I hope you'll return for hopefully not an unlucky episode 13 in Legends of the Tetrarchs. Possibly a sequel direct or indirect to Alvastia? We fought Tetrarchs in that game. Now we are them? Love to see you until next time. Take care and thanks for watching.